So next heading you write down. We'll, like I said, we'll discuss the extraction of various uh, metals also. What are the different different steps involved and how do we do this? But before going into that, first we'll see the Ellingham diagram. So write down the heading, Ellingham diagram. This is very important for your board exam, school exam, anything. So in this chapter, this is the most important uh, topic we have. Ellingham diagram. Few things you try to understand first. We'll use the concept of thermodynamics here also to make you understand this. Okay. So Ellingham diagram to understand this, we'll use the concept of thermodynamics, right? So before going into the graph directly, which is there in the NCRT book, if you have your NCRT book with you, you can open it now. Okay. And you can see the diagram. I'll also draw the diagram, but first of all, let me discuss the theory of it. Okay. Like, you know, a Lingham diagram, we all know that for a spontaneous process, for a spontaneity, what is the condition we have for a spontaneity? We have two conditions generally, and that is Delta H less than zero exothermic or entropy increases delta s greater than zero right so we can say either the process should be exothermic or it goes towards more randomness this is the condition of spontaneity okay now, if I write down the relation and the combined combination of these two gives you this delta G is equals to delta H minus T delta S, right? So overall condition, if I write for a spontaneous process, delta G must be less than zero. This we have already done in the class 11, right? This is the condition we have for spontaneity. Now you see to discuss this Allingham diagram, for any oxide formation, for any oxide formation, what we can say that the oxygen gas consumes, right? Oxygen gas consumes, and since the gas particle is getting consumed, so we can say entropy decreases or increases tell me delta s oxygen gas consumes and hence entropy decreases or increases how this increases tell me gaseous particles is getting consumed so obviously the entropy should decrease yeah, because the gaseous particle is getting consumed. So entropy should decrease in this. So when the oxide formation, which is one of the steps we have in extraction of metals, what we can say the entropy delta S decreases because the gaseous particle is getting consumed, right? So M metal plus O2 gas, if I write, it forms, suppose oxides MO. And that is why the entropy decreases, correct? So when temperature increases, you see here, when temperature increases, then what happens? T delta S becomes more negative, yes or no? Becomes more negative. Right, because delta S is decreasing, T increases, T delta S becomes more negative. T delta S becomes more negative, hence delta G what? Delta G increases with increase in temperature. 
all of you understood this if t delta s is more negative right then this t delta s minus sign we already have this becomes plus and delta g increases that's what i wrote here okay all of you have written this can i go to the next page tell me okay so now you write down this the the free energy change change that occurs free energy change that occurs when 1 gram molecule when 1 gram molecule of a common reactant of a common reactant which is generally we have oxygen is used right free energy change that occurs when 1 gram of a common reactant is used when plotted against when plotted against the temperature the temperature for a number of reactions of metal number of reactions of metals forming their oxides the graph that we get in this way we get this way is called allingham diagram so basically allingham diagram is the graph of what is the graph of delta g right delta g not versus temperature in short delta g not versus temperature okay temperature we write here in degree celsius okay and in which reaction the reaction in which the metal forms metal forms metal oxide in this reaction whatever the change in delta g not we have with respect to the temperature that graph gives you the allingham diagram got it there are some key features of this diagram okay so first we'll see the diagram here you also draw this
this axis we have temperature in degree celsius 500 1000 1500 2000 2500 this side we have minus 1200 minus 1000 minus 800 minus 600 minus 400 minus 200 0 plus 200 delta g naught the unit is kilojoule per mole okay All of you draw this diagram. Okay. The first graph here goes like this. This is the graph we have. This graph is for silver AG, the first one. This is HG. This graph is for C plus O2 gives CO2. This graph is for nickel. This is for iron. This is for chromium. This is for titanium. This is for aluminium. This is for magnesium. And the last one is for calcium. The sharp change this includes that at this point, magnesium boils. That's why we have a sharp change in the slope. This point similarly, Hg boils. Again, I'm telling you this, this diagram you don't have to memorize. Okay, the diagram is not that important, but there are a few things we need to understand from this graph. That's why I have drawn this diagram here. Okay, so what we observe the first thing here, if you see, all of you have done this, tell me. Draw it. Okay. Now the first point, this key features you must remember. Okay, this is important. The first point here is that we observe from this for most of the 
uh, metal we see the oxides of the metal this graph actually it is the graph of oxides of this metal chromium titanium aluminium right i have written only metal name here but this actually represent the reaction of this with oxygen which gives the metal oxide okay so first thing that we uh, that we observe for most of the metals the gibbs free energy change gives free energy change increases with increase in temperature that is what we observe it increases the sharp change in this graph next point to write down the sharp change represents represents the change in state the change in state when the material melts or or vaporize third point below this line you see below the line delta g is equals to 0 below this line delta z is equals to 0 this line so write down below the is equals to zero line the oxides are stable are stable because it is less than zero and above this line the oxides are unstable unstable means it dissociates into into the metal and oxygen further so this diagram also gives us the information of oxides of any metal is stable at which temperature right so for this you see approximately for silver oxide the line this line where this line cuts this delta g is equals to zero line below this line below this point the silver oxide is stable above this line the silver oxide is not stable means corresponding to this point this intersection of these two lines corresponding to this point you will have some temperature right so we can say below this temperature the oxide of silver is stable above this temperature the oxide is not stable and it converts back into the metal and oxygen right did you finish this tell me okay now in this third point only one note you write down in the third point like what we say that when you heat the oxides of any metal any oxides it decompose into its uh, metal and oxygen right so what we can write here theoretically theoretically all oxides can decompose into metal and oxygen and oxygen at high temperature theoretically it is possible at high temperature but practically from a lingam diagram but practically oxides of silver gold and mercury oxides of silver gold and mercury are the only oxides
are the only oxides which can be decomposed which can be decomposed at high temperature since it crosses the line delta g is equal to zero line these oxides only crosses and hence that's why we also say and hence this metal can be extracted from the thermal decomposition and hence this metal can be extracted from the thermal decomposition right so keep that in mind these three can be ex extracted by thermal decomposition okay now the next important point we have the fourth point you write down the metals which lie which lie above in a lingam diagram get reduced by get reduced by the metal which is below which is below right so as you are going down in the alingam diagram right the oxidizing tendency oxidizing tendency increases for the metal to get oxidized the tendency is more right as you go above right bottom to top if you are going the metal has more tendency to get reduced right and the one which is above get reduced by the one which is below right so when you see the alingam diagram when you see this alingam diagram so we can say chromium get reduced by titanium titanium get reduced by aluminium like this magnesium get reduced aluminium get reduced by magnesium below this temperature 1500 okay magnesium uh, aluminium get reduced by magnesium below 15 degrees 1500 degrees celsius okay so that's how it means okay one note you write down here aluminium aluminium reduces oxides of iron chromium titanium this reaction is known as is known as thermite reaction thermite reaction magnesium cannot reduce oxides of aluminium above 1500 degrees celsius okay finish this one